The average person in the United States in their late 20s has approximately $10,000 saved for retirement. With a portfolio that size, how much dividend income could you expect to receive? While $10,000 will not be enough to fund a typical retirement, you may be surprised at how much it would pay in dividends alone. Perhaps it will be enough to fund a typical retirement. Take a look at the many scenarios that would produce varying levels of income. This will give you an idea of how much money you'll need to become financially independent. Stay tuned until the conclusion to learn about a significant error that some investors make and how you can avoid it. Maximize your investments for exponentially more money in the future. Welcome to Cashflow Canvas, where we teach people about money, personal finance, and investing. If you're interested in improving your financial future, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if this video was helpful. The S&P 500 Index is perhaps the most popular investment because it provides exposure to 500 large American companies with a history of stability and profitability. It is also well-balanced, meaning that you own parts of each sector and industry that comprise the entire stock market. This is what investors most commonly refer to when they say the market if you purchase an ETF or index fund that tracks the S&P 500, you'll receive a dividend yield of less than 1.5%. The reason for this is that the market has a long track record of healthy returns and is highly recommended by Warren Buffett. Because many of the top holdings are technology businesses, which are notorious for paying little to no dividends, with a $10,000 investment, this index would only give around $150 per year, or $12.50 per month in dividends. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is another popular investment. This is another index that investors usually refer to as the market's second most important index after the S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is comprised of 30 of the top firms in the United States and is seen as a secondary barometer of the health of the American economy. Investors can purchase a fund that tracks the Dow Jones Industrial Average and would earn a dividend somewhat higher than that of the S&P 500, at little more than 1.5%. Another approach for achieving a greater dividend yield would be to choose a fund that focuses on giving more income and less capital appreciation. There are numerous high-quality options that hold equities of reliable corporations with a long history of dividend payments. For example, there is a dividend yield of roughly 4% which is much greater than the overall S&P 500. Instead of owning every firm in the S&P 500, it only owns the ones that pay the highest dividends because growth is significantly lower over the long term. With $10,000 in this fund, the yearly dividend income would be roughly $400 or $33 per month. There are several additional high-yield funds available that are excellent for senior investors. They are popular among the elderly since they provide more stability and perform better during difficult times. When you combine the steadiness of bear markets with regular income, it's no surprise that these are popular among retirees. A second approach for consumers to earn higher than average dividends is to invest in a sector or industry-specific fund. A fund like this only invests in one sector or industry, such as energy and real estate. Due to the nature of their business, certain sectors generate larger dividends than others. For example, the energy sector is valued relatively low and has a high dividend yield, since many investors are scared away by the volatility caused by economic changes, renewable substitutes, and regulations. Over 3% of real estate investment trusts are also considered slightly risky, and due to their business structure, the majority of their gains are distributed to shareholders in the form of dividends. The Vanguard Real Estate ETF has a yield of more than 3% for investors prepared to conduct some homework and buy sectors that have fallen out of favor. As the sectors regain favor, the returns would be in the form of dividends and capital appreciation. A $10,000 investment in Vanguard's Real Estate or Energy ETF would yield approximately $300 per year or $25 per month in income. Although many finance experts recommend purchasing index funds or ETFs if you're a beginner investor with a small portfolio, this way you can learn about market behavior, receive consistent returns, and grow your portfolio without taking too much risk. You may eventually decide to select individual stocks if you're willing to do the research and take the risk. If you decide to buy individual stocks, look for a history of dividend growth. For example, the list of dividend aristocrats is a good place to start 
because each aristocrat has a history of increasing its dividend for 25 consecutive years. A dividend aristocrat, such as Av, currently pays a 4.5% dividend. If you were to invest $10,000 in this company, you would receive approximately $450 per year or $37 per month in dividends, as well as any capital appreciation or depreciation based on future stock movement. Additionally, it is prudent to screen those prospects based on their fundamentals to ensure they have reasonable payout ratios around positive earnings of 50% to 60% or less, as well as a variety of other potential metrics. Individual stocks offer opportunities for bargains because they are frequently liquidated, whether as a result of recent bad news, an earnings miss, or new management. Because the stock market has a tendency to overreact, this could create an opportunity for a clever investor. Because most investors with $10,000 or less should seriously consider ignoring dividends entirely because investing in growth stocks has the potential to make you much more money over time than dividend-paying investments. Those who are still young should typically seek growth. A 2% difference in your annual rate of return can make a huge difference over a career. For example, someone who invests $10,000 once at the age of 25 and earns an 8% rate of return until the age of 65 will have $217,000. If they had achieved a 10% return, they would have $450,000, or more than double the money, by the age of 65. It's crucial to remember that growth stocks can be more volatile, which can be tough for investors who are unfamiliar with market changes. An ETF such as this is a terrific alternative for younger investors. Vanguard's Growth ETF, or BUG for short, holds large-cap growth firms such as Apple, Amazon, Home Depot, and other huge stable brands. Over the long term, a growth index will likely exceed the S&P 500, which is excellent for someone who has many years until income is required. The UG has a dividend yield of less than 0.5% because most holdings pay little to no dividends instead of reinvesting profits within the business to continue growing at a rapid rate. Because of this low yield, a $10,000 investment would only yield less than $50 per year in dividends or about $4 per month. There are many quality holdings options comparable to this fund that have historically outperformed the market too often. Consumers grow obsessed with the yield and buy the wrong assets for their time horizon. In general, an investor with a $10,000 portfolio would be better off focusing on growth rather than dividends. How much of a difference would income make? When it comes to paying bills and funding your daily needs, whether it is $50 per year or $500 per year, that sum is unlikely to be too much in your life. Growth stocks will offer you extra money in the future when you are ready to retire. At that time, you can switch your growth stocks. It makes sense, shift investments to income investments. Nevertheless, don't make the error of focusing solely on dividend yield early on.